Well, welcome everybody to our virtual cooking class with Live Life Well. My name is Kate Watts. I'm a registered dietitian for employee well-being, and today we're doing a super easy recipe to um, that's really versatile as well, and it's super simple, guys. I mean, this is probably the simplest recipe I've done on here, and it is our um, stewed cinnamon apples. So we're going to do it a couple ways, and we're also going to use it in a few different dishes because this is one of my favorite ways to use seasonal produce. Apples here in North Carolina this time of year are abundant, and they are really a great way to naturally satisfy your sweet tooth. Um, so let's jump right into it. So the recipe today is just, it's a small batch. It's two medium apples, but you'll be surprised how much this actually will end up making. So I've already washed uh, my apples. And so I'm going to just pull these out and dry them off. So I actually did a little bit of a soak for them um, because I'm going to be using the skin on. Now that's kind of controversial for people. Most people would peel their apples um, for a stewed apple recipe. But the benefit of the skin is you don't have to peel them. <laughs> no, <laughs> other than being a little bit of laziness in the kitchen, um, they are going to add a lot more fiber uh, when you keep the skin on. It's also going to add more color and interest. To me, I like the color. I don't mind the texture. If you absolutely hate the texture, feel free to pull out your peeler and peel your apples before you dice them. But I'm gonna leave the skin on and that's why I wanted to make sure that I clean them really well. Even if you are peeling them, you still wanna wash them under running water, pat them off, um, but I'm gonna leave the skin on so I went a little extra step with a soak and I'll tell you about that in a little bit. These apples, um, I'm gonna just do a quick dice. And you can use, you know, a larger chef's knife or a smaller, more like paring style knife, depending on the size of your apple. These are pretty large, um, so I think I might go with the larger knife today, but either one would work. Um, as you're dicing these, we just want to get them into somewhat equal size pieces so that they're going to cook evenly. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. And these apples that I got today were actually from our um, mobile farmers market partner. So Homestead Market comes on site to different Cone Health locations. Um, and I think they come on four days a week to different um, acute care sites. Um, and so I caught them over at Almance Regional. They also... Um, go to Alamance, uh, excuse me, uh, Med Center Greensboro, Wesley Long, and Moses Cone. So if you're interested in their schedule, you can check that out on the Live Life Well website. Um, it's under healthy eating, and we've got the mobile market schedule. So if you don't have time to get to mobile, uh, a farmer's market rather, um, that's a great benefit that we offer is partnership with them. So I'm just slicing and then coming across and dicing into fairly small pieces so that they'll, you know, cook up pretty quickly for us today. Um, these apples are Brayburn apples. Uh, they are related to the Gala apple family. Um, and so they are very similar in taste of a Gala. However, they are very white, very, very white apples. And I like them for this recipe because they take on the color of the cinnamon and the maple syrup, and it's just a really pretty <laughs> combination. I mean, look how white that is for an apple. Um, but they taste really good. They're great for this recipe. Other apples you could use would be um, any kind of apple you would cook with. So Granny Smith is what most people think of right off the bat. And then actually um, honey crisp apples would be great for this recipe because what we're going for is a sweetness over a tartness and since we're cooking them down uh i also like a pretty firm apple um it, unless you like want a really mushy um we want soft 
in this recipe, we don't really want mushy. So I try to stick with a really nicely um, uh, stiff, firm apple if I can. So honey crisp is really good for that. Um, and they're also really sweet and not too tart. So, but you could use just about anything. I've done some gala apples, Fuji apples. All right, so there's what one diced apple looks like. We're gonna go ahead and just quickly dice up our other one. And then we're gonna add everything into a pot, put it on the stove and let it do its work. <laughs> All right, so this recipe uses maple syrup as the sweetener. You honestly can make this with no sweetener at all. Most recipes you see, um, or the way grandma might have taught you to cook it, cook your apples down on the stove, would be with some form of sugar, whether it's regular granulated sugar or um, a brown sugar. Um, but we're going to use maple syrup just as a you know, just as an alternative today. I personally really like the flavor and color that it brings. Um, as far as managing blood sugar, managing prediabetes or diabetes, is it a better option? It's all about the portion size. It's really all about the portion size. And so for me, because I like the flavor of maple syrup, I feel like I can use less and be happy with the sweetness level than if I'm using a table sugar. Um, so with our maple syrup, we're only using a teaspoon today for the whole recipe. It's a very minimal amount of natural sugar that we're gonna be using. Now other recipes um, also use butter and we're not gonna use any kind of extra fat or butter in this recipe. And I think they come out delicious um, without it. So again, that's just gonna save us a little bit of calories and a little bit of fat. Um, but certainly if you were doing a very low carb eating plan, uh, you could probably afford to spend a little bit of calories on some butter and that could add that extra flavor um, since you're not using additional sweetener. Again, I eat these plain just with cinnamon and water all the time, but we're gonna use a little bit of maple syrup today. So let's get them on the stove. So we've got our small pot. To this, we're going to add two tablespoons of water because we don't want them to get too dried out. And as you're cooking and stirring, you can add splashes of water as you go if you need to. So we're going to start with two tablespoons and then we're going to um, empty our apples in here. If you are going to, oh, if you are going to use the back of your, if you are going to use your knife to scrape, you want to use the back of it so that you're not dulling your knife. You could also use your hands <laughs> um, or you can get a nice what we call bench scraper, um, which I do have, but I didn't bother to pull out today. And it's just a simple um, utensil that is a flat blade, uh, not really blade, just um, makes it easy to scrape your produce off of your workspace. OK, so we've got our apples in there. Now we're going to add in our maple syrup and our cinnamon. And we're going to do a teaspoon of each. You could do more cinnamon if your heart desires. I'm going to go, uh, you know, I'm going to do a very um, um, liberal measurement there. <laughs> so I did use a teaspoon, but I let all that extra go in there if it wanted to because I love some cinnamon. Now we are going to measure out our maple syrup. Oop, all right, there we go. And then we're just going to give that a stir and get it on the stove. We're just going to cook this at low today. All right, so we'll pop our stove on low. And so you're going to coat your apples. Again, I've left the skin on. I think it looks nice. I don't mind the texture. We're going to get extra fiber and nutrition that way. And we cut out the most labor intensive step of this recipe by not having to peel these apples. All right, let's put it on the stove. I'm gonna keep an eye on that. We'll set a timer, but um, 10 minutes is a good starting place, continuing regularly to stir, stop and stir, stop and look. 
We may let it go a little longer. I often do. You certainly can cook them down to the consistency that you desire. We're just looking for them to get soft. It's going to only take about 30 seconds for you to immediately smell the fragrance of that cinnamon on the stove. And then as it starts to get closer to being done, as you're stirring them, it's going to almost smell like an applesauce or an apple cider because the juices are going to be cooking um, into the apples. All right. So we'll give it a stir. We'll leave our wooden spoon there. And let's talk a little bit about how I clean these apples today. So this is um, a baking soda soak. And so all I did, let me take my last apple out here. All I did is take six cups of water and a tablespoon of baking soda. So this is the best way to get rid of any pesticides. So if you're not buying organic apples, then you want to consider the best way to get rid of any pesticide residue that's on them. Apples are continually, year after year, on the top of the list for the Dirty Dozen. You can look up the Dirty Dozen each year. It tells you which produce items have the highest pesticide residues for non-organic. And that's a cue that if you can afford organic, you might want to focus on that Dirty Dozen, especially if it's items that you eat a lot. Like we eat apples and strawberries in my house all the time. Um, and so those are ones that if I have the budget, if I have it in my grocery budget, those are the ones I'm going to splurge on for organic. There's also a clean 15 list that are the lowest residue items. Those are ones you may not need to splurge on organic as often. Um, so if we're buying non-organic, we're still getting all the great nutrition, but we just want to make sure our food is clean. Now, organic or not, there's still going to be dirt <laughs> and grime and you know bacteria on our produce. So the FDA recommends that you do a quick 12 second, 15 second rinse off under running water and then wipe off wipe it off to dry. Um, so the addition of the baking soda soak is really for that pesticide um, removal for non-organic. So um, if you take, for example, four cups of water into a large bowl, you're just going to need two teaspoons. So it's one teaspoon of baking soda for every two cups of water. And I just use plain old tap water Okay, so we've mixed our baking soda. Again, that's one teaspoon of baking soda to every two cups of water. So for a bigger batch of apples, <laughs> when I come home with my bag of apples, I get a big bowl. I do six cups of water and a tablespoon, and then I just plop my apples in, and you let them soak for 12 to 15 minutes. Then you take them out, dry them off, and they're nice and clean and ready to use. So if you do like to enjoy the peels of your apples, Definitely recommend um, this method. If you don't have baking soda, you can also use um, vinegar. The baking soda one outperformed everything else in research, but vinegar also is a great um, alternative to do that to wash your, not only your apples, but any kind of produce. Okay, so I find that stuff interesting. That might've been boring to some of y'all. <laughs> so we'll move on. So the great thing about this recipe or stewed apples in general, is that you can also do this in the microwave. So I thought we would kind of compare what that looked like today. So for our microwave apples, we're gonna um, chop up one more apple and then we've got, I got about a tablespoon of water in here for this one. Wipe off my knife. And we're going to cook the apples a little bit with the water. And then we'll add in our cinnamon and maple syrup and pop it back in the microwave. Different, um, I wouldn't even call that a recipe, right? But different, you know, guidelines for this say different things. Mix it all together, pop it in for three to four minutes. This one is the quickest <laughs> recipe or uh, method that I could find. And I thought, I think it turns out pretty nice. So um, if you really want to just have a quick, delicious, comforting snack you can chop you up an apple and pop it in the microwave 
and we'll kind of compare the results that we get. Anybody have those fancy uh, Apple coring devices or utensils or the slices? Remember, my mom had one as a kid, uh, I guess, so that we could do it ourselves <laughs> because you don't even need a knife, right? It's just like a, and ours was the shape of an apple. And you put it down over the apple and it removed the core and it sliced it into pieces all at once for you. It was great. But again, didn't peel it for you. <laughs> okay, so let's add our apple in here. Oh, missed a piece. You can see I'm, you know, I'm not culinary trained. I, I like to think I have decent knife skills, but it's just a rough chop, approximately all the same size. So we're going to pop this in the microwave just for 30 seconds. That's just going to steam the apples a little bit, let them soak up that water, and that way they're not going to get dried out. And that way, when we add in our cinnamon and maple syrup, it's going to go right onto the apples too and not um, just be sitting in liquid in the bottom of the bowl. So let's go ahead and stir these again. I started out just a, just a bit. Here's what we're looking like so far. So really, this is all about the feel of them rather than the look you'll be able to tell obviously as they soften by the look but i'm really going to know that they're done by the feel of my spoon on the apples i want them to be very soft to the touch um, and that crispness to be completely gone i also want for since i kept the skin on for that to be nice and soft as well and I'm also going to keep stirring it so that those juices in the bottom, I continually kind of put them back on top so that they're getting soaked into the apples as they cook, because that's where all that flavor is. All right, so 30 seconds in the microwave. Now we're going to add in our cinnamon and maple syrup. All right, so those look just as they did before, <laughs> but a little softer. So we're going to do half a tablespoon here because I only did one apple. And some cinnamon. I'm just going to eyeball this one. Did y'all know? Y'all know how we do the spices around here. Okay. Give that a stir. There is still liquid in the bottom here. And if there wasn't, you might consider adding a dash more of water, but that's really just if your apples are looking dry, right? Okay. Here we go. Back in for a minute. So those are going to microwave down for a minute. And they are ready to eat after that. And at this point, your kitchen is smelling amazing. You might sit back, eat on a few uh, slices that didn't get cut <laughs> for a little snack. And once ours come out of the microwave, I'll go ahead and show you uh, how we're going to plate up our stewed apples today. All right, so we are going to do the apples three different ways. Um, and we're going to do a oatmeal topped with stewed apples. We're going to do a yogurt parfait bowl. Um, and then we're going to do stewed apples as a dessert. So let me clear my workspace here and then we will get to plating. Okay, our microwave apples are done. Be careful though with the steam, you may need to use, um, you know, a um, oven mitt or something like that. So those are our microwaved apples. Steaming hot, ready to go. There is some juice in the bottom, but they're all cooked and ready. Okay, so there's those. These apples here on the stove, what did I do in my, here we go. These have been going for exactly 10 minutes and they are still quite crisp. So I'm gonna let them go another 10. For our TV magic moment, here is what they would look like after another 10 minutes. 
So you can see these have cooked down really nicely. There's a good amount of liquid in the bottom that we're going to be able to pour over our dishes. To me, the difference is, and here's another microwave batch. These got a little more dried out. I didn't stay on top of the water as much, but they are mm, very sweet. Sorry, sorry, I'll use a spoon. <laughs> Y'all don't like it when I use my hands. Mm, they're all so good. Okay, let me show you how I would use these. Let's start with our oatmeal. All right, so we've got basic stovetop oatmeal, okay? I haven't added anything to this. I cooked it half milk, half water. That's just how we do it. We're strange. We make it more complicated than it needs to be. You do it however you want. Um, so I haven't added any sweetness. So I'm gonna add my um, apples. And a good portion for these would be like a fourth of the recipe, a fourth of the two apples, which would be about a half a cup. So I'm gonna place those right on top there. Uh-huh. And then I'm going to add maple syrup drizzled on top for a little extra sweetness for my oatmeal since I did not sweeten it before. And so I would do, again, about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. Oops, that was extra splash <laughs> on our oatmeal. And that's going to be one way that I would consume these apples. Let's give it a try. Oh, my goodness, y'all. That is like the way to start a crisp fall morning. Mmm. Mmm. Excuse me. So good. Yep. Delicious. Okay. Option number two is going to be our yogurt bulb. So I'm using Greek non-fat plain yogurt. You can use full fat if you want. I'm just watching the um, calories and fat here. And we're doing plain because there's no added sugar. These apples are going to sweeten it up. The maple syrup's going to sweeten it up. So I'm going to do about a three-fourth cup portion of yogurt. Ooh, that's kind of bright. There we go. All right. Get that nice in the center of my bowl. Let's do a little bit more. All right. So a nice plain yogurt. Good protein. Good probiotics. We're going to add on again a half a cup of our apples. All right. There we go. And now we're going to add in some nuts of your choice. These are pecans. Mm. My favorite right now. Um, and then dried cranberries, dried cherries, any kind of dried fruit. The apple cranberry combination this time of year. I mean, y'all, yes, please. I eat it on everything. Probably put this on that oatmeal too. Okay. There's our yogurt. Parfait. Where's my spoon? <laughs> there we go. Oh, man. And you could drizzle a little bit more cinnamon over this. Mm. A little bit more. Maple syrup or cinnamon to flavor that plain yogurt, but just the apples alone add enough sweetness for me. So good. Okay, last way to enjoy our apples as a dessert. Yeah. Again, this is what a half a cup portion looks like. You can have more than this, but for us managing our blood sugar, it is Diabetes Awareness Month. This is a good portion. Um, how do we have to enjoy this as dessert? We add a little bit of Cool Whip. Sprinkle of cinnamon. And that is how I would satisfy my sweet tooth at the end of a beautiful fall day or after a day spent with family, indulging in other foods. This is a great way to enjoy mm, a little sweetness with some coffee or a hot tea. 
I hope y'all enjoyed this. Thanks for hanging out with me, and um, I'll see you next time. If you want to catch this recording, it'll be put up on our Live Life Well YouTube channel with all of our other virtual cooking classes. So go and check those out. The recipe for those of you that are watching online is down in the description. So give it a try. And it can't get any easier than this. I probably made it sound more complicated than it is. Um, but I hope you all enjoy it. Bye.